rolling, rolling, rolling. We're on. Hallelujah. Welcome to Wednesday night at Expedition Church. Hallelujah. Don't y'all let me forget to announce the announcement about what we're doing at the end of service. Hallelujah. But we want to go through these last three. We may not be here. We may get through this pretty quick. And um, praise the Lord if we do. Isn't that good? Amen. Amen. The Expedition Church is now live. Hallelujah. And um, all right, now I've killed the sound. Um, sound is down. All right. Hallelujah. Well, we're glad to have you all with us. I'll get me some water before I get really good and going here. Um, we're going to try to finish. With the um, last three healings we have listed um, in the ministry of Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, let's go to Luke chapter 14. Luke 14. <clears throat> and we'll begin in verse 1. <clears throat> and it came to pass as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat, to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they watched him. I'm telling you, they'd even invite him over for lunch to try to catch him something. We'll give you a free meal so we can catch you. <coughs> and, um, <coughs> and behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. And Jesus answered and spake to the lawyers and Pharisees. They say, he knows what they did it for, so he's going to challenge them right straight up. Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And they held their peace. And he took him and healed him and let him go. And they answered them, because they didn't answer, they didn't say nothing. Okay. Saying, which of you shall have an ass and or an ox fallen into a pit and will not straightway pull him on, out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him again on these things. <laughs> yeah, there you go. They called him in there, hoping to catch him with some, and he just went up straight up and challenged him right straight up. And um, you got to love that. Amen? Because, you know, the religious people just don't, don't like it when you mess with their power structure. They don't like the power structure being messed with. They're, they're more interested in their power than they are in people being ministered to. Their position in being right, as we said about the other man the other, other week. Hallelujah. And so uh, this man with the dropsy was healed. And, of course, uh, they couldn't even, they just sat there. I always like to be kind of like imagining like a motorboat idling at the, at the dock. They just don't know what to say. Okay. Now let's go to the next one. We'll talk about the uh, ten lepers. Uh, that account is found in Luke's Gospel, the 17th chapter. And dropping down to verse 11, we'll pick this story up. <clears throat> and it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of, the city of uh, Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, uh, leprosy was considered an extremely communicable disease. They had leper camps that were without the cities. Uh, they were banished from uh, contact with society. Um, they, you know, and um, I think they found in the past half a century that leprosy was, was caused by some type of nerve disorder. They actually found it like a cure for it. But it, it was so debilitating um, that their, their, their um, extremities would rot off. Uh, they would become disfigured. You know, I mean, your nose would fall off. Your, your fingers would, would rot off. It was, it was an extremely disabling and, uh, disease and disfiguring disease. So they would cover their faces. You know, they would hide under wrap because so, it was just, you know, they became grotesque. And um, they said, have mercy on us. He said, go show yourself unto the priest. And as it came to the past, they were cleansed. Now, what happened to them? They were cleansed of the leprosy. And then it went away. 
And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God, fell down on his face at his feet to give him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus said, were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? They are not, uh, they are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. In other words, here's one outside the covenant again. Okay, he's a Samaritan. He's a half Jew. He's not considered uh, legal under the, uh, under the uh, covenants to be a um, covenant child. They're outcast. And Jesus said, 10 of you were cleansed, but only one came back, and it was, it was somebody outside the covenant. Now listen to this. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Don't go to the priest. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Now, what's the, what happened? The other nine got cleansed. But this guy's like a country song. Got his fingers back, got his toes back, got his nose back. Okay, y'all remember the song, What the Happens When We Play a Country Song Backwards? Get your first two wives back, get the dog back, get the truck back. Y'all ever heard that song? <laughs> so the song says, what happens when you play a country song? Remember Backward Mask and used to do with albums? It said, when you play a country song backwards, what happens? Get your wife back, get your dog back, get your truck back, get your... <laughs> Okay, y'all would have had to have understood that to even get that whole thing. Okay. But he was made whole. His, every, the, all the debilitation in him, all the things that happened, he got it all back. He was made whole. Hallelujah. Because he received, but then he worshiped and glorified God. He glorified God in that place. And got in the, got, it was in, it's obviously, Jesus said, your faith made you whole. So he was not just healed of the leprosy, he was restored. So God did a restorative work in him because of his act of faith of worshiping him. Amen. See, God can restore. Um, there's the, um, and I don't know where to go find, find this in, in full detail. But it is the A.A. A. Allen miracle of the baby with no eyes, no facial features. I mean, just um, deformed. Mother brought it up to the, brought it to the meeting, and um, that baby got complete, not just healed, restored. Eyes swirled and formed in its head. I mean, it was like it's 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 the miracle of of, of the of the charismatic. Uh, healing revival miracle that's documented. It's the miracle of miracles. They meant that. Um, now, it probably took place after the healing revival. It was in the late 50s. Um, Shambach was there. If you don't know, Shambach was A.A. A. Allen's coat holder. He, 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 he followed Brother, Sh Brother Allen and held his coat, so to speak. He was, he was Brother Allen Stephen. Okay? And, um, you know, followed after him. And... Um, you know, and so of course, then his ministry launched later. But he would he would tell that story, you know. He would tell about that miracle, and, and how he just held it and, and began to pray. And that mir that baby was just you could hear the cracking and the popping of the joints and the bones and everything. And it was, boom, hallelujah. I said hallelujah, and so you can't make that stuff up. You can't fake it till you make it. <laughs> I'm sorry, that just kind of slid out, didn't it? Every once in a while I get honoring. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, there's some things you can't fake till you make. It either is or isn't. Amen? Do I now? No. That's right. No. No. <coughs> um, and we, we hear several, we hear stories of, of people bringing dead babies to the meetings, like T.L. Oswald meetings over uh, back in in the 50s and 60s, and they would be raised from the dead, and so forth and so on. So, um, there's the, God does move in supernatural, majestic ways, and it seems to be when there's a coldness. So I, I think we're prime <laughs> because we we've re we've reached a stage where the church is more interested in you know, um, their own personal lascivious lifestyles and their 
being blessed and they're this and they're that instead of serving God. And um, we'll, we'll follow after something and prophesy uh, ungodly people into political office when they're not called. You know, when they're not, when they're not going, you know, God has no intention of putting that person in there. You know, um, now sometimes they win, but it wasn't because God put them there. Okay. And so we, we have to, we have to understand that. Um, but we think because somebody's of our culture or whatever or whatever, that automatically means that, you know, that, and they claim to be a Christian. Well, I'm a believer. <laughs> Jesus said, you know them by their fruits. Amen. Did we not say, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Did we cast out devils in your name? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But we run around with the love narrative today going, we got to love them. They said they're a believer. We just, we believe, we love them. Jesus said, you know them by their fruit. What fruit do they bear of righteousness? Amen. Not playing it because it gets you a vote. Hello. I'm a Christian. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they, they love Jesus. They believe in abortion. They believe in homosexuality. <clears throat> they vote for it. They're all, they're all about it. But they love Jesus. Well, I doubt it. I mean, you're gonna, they're going to have to stand before his throne. And they're going to have to give an account for that stuff, before the very throne of God. Don't think it's going to be a pleasant experience. As one friend said, as my wife says all the time, just saying. <laughs> all right. And this one, we're going to cover the last. So here we have, thy faith made thee whole. So the other nine went off and got cleansed, but he got all healed back. Everything restored. Looked normal. He's, I guess his name was Judah Ben-Hur. Okay. How many ever saw the movie Ben-Hur? Okay, remember, his, his mom and his sister got completely restored, not just healed. They got restored, you know, in the movie. <laughs> I, watched, I watched that thing. Hollywood used to make movies like this where they, I mean, they honored and respected the power of God. I mean, you know, the blood of Jesus hitting the water and it running down. They had power to heal him. I mean, you know, Sesame DeMiles, the, the Ten Commandments. I mean, yeah, he Hollywooded it a little bit, but still. I mean, you know, he, he, God got glory. God was glorified. He, he read, I forgot how much of the scriptures. He would read, he would read at the um, onset of the movie, he was reading the Bible. And different places in there, they were reading from the scriptures. And, you know, um, I have the whatever anniversary edition of that came in Ten Commandments binder. So the kids took a picture of me, put it on Facebook. You know, Moses, Moses. All right. The blind men near Jericho. It's going to be the last one. We're, I told you we're going to finish early, but we know we, we, did, we didn't enough, have enough time last week and we wanted to finish, so we're going to finish tonight. And you get an early night. Well, we came to all the way to church. Okay. Well, we, isn't that good? Because we, we got to talk about a couple things afterwards, anyway, about, about the, um, about the, uh, Chris, about Christmas. Um, Uh, let me see here. There are three passages. Let, let's go to Luke's 18, 35. It came to pass, he was coming down to Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before him, before, rebuked him, saying he should hold his peace. But he cried the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. See, there are people who try to keep you out of your miracle. Yeah. Shut up. Don't, don't bother him. You know, that's, don't you know who that is? And he'd, he'd like, 
I don't care. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He wouldn't stop. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was coming there, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou I should do unto thee? He said, Lord, I might, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. Now remember, sozo, the word translated save, also can be translated and should have been here translated healed. Okay, that faith, that faith has healed thee. Uh, it's, it's how, because that the, the uh, what's in operation here is healing. Okay? And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. Um, and, all, and, and all the people that saw it gave praise unto God. I'm telling you, when real miracles are wrought, people begin to just magnify God. Now, now the same story is told by Matthew, but instead of telling it with just one person, there's two. Okay. Behold, two men, uh, men sat at Matthew 20, sat by the wayside when they heard that Jesus passed that, cried out, Have mercy on us, O thou Lord, thou Son of David. And the multitude rebuked them that they should hold their peace, but they cried the more, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David. Jesus called, one know that the eyes may open. He had compassion on them and immediately touched their eyes, and they followed him. Okay. So Matthew didn't major on. Their faith side, he majored on the miracle side, the compassion of the Lord. So by putting these together, we find out that faith will put the compassion of the Lord into operation. Okay? Compassion um, comes from a Greek word that, that lends the idea to suffer with, to be bound to it, with them compassion for them and so the healing power was released out of compassion but drawn by faith amen now of these 19 different healings in the gospels of you know of which 32 different records are there's 32 recordings of healings in the ministry of jesus 19 are, are different in other words, 13 of them are repeats. Okay? Of those 19 different healings, uh, 12 of them attribute the faith of the individual. Seven didn't say anything about their faith. Okay? So we know that you receive healing more often through faith than you do by working on miracles or gifts of healings and manifestation. But, so which, which, which I think should give you hope and, 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 um, comfort, and comfort knowing that you don't have to wait for the healing evangelist to show up because in most cases you can receive it by yourself. Now, thank God for the manifestations. We, we don't discount, reject, demean in any way the manifestations of the Spirit where gifts of healings are in operation and manifestation. We glorify God. But if you're having to wait till the next time the evangelist shows up, you can suffer for a long time. What if something happens? He's supposed to come in the fall and something happened. COVID, in two years he couldn't come. So you had to suffer an extra two years. Because you know, all your faith is only in getting it from the healing evangelist. Amen. All right? So, um, that's the 19. Glory to God. And um, yeah, like I said, we're gonna we were, we were going to finish early tonight. Um, these healings are a snapshot. God's trying to teach us. We see that through uh, in a combined um, observation of all of these that um, What's the word I'm looking for? I'm looking for um, undeniable faith. You can't be denied. We used to sing that old church hymn, I, I, I would not be denied. Okay? I would not, I can't remember. I would not be denied. I would not be denied. You know, I, I, it's an old hymn. I can't, I can't remember all the words, but I haven't sung it in 40 years. 
They don't sing it in the charismatic church. They sing it in my Pentecostal church. Okay? Um, but a, a persistent faith, that's the word I'm looking for. A persistent faith. Hello? A merciful God. Amen? Who cares for people. Healing can be obtained by people who will not quit because God's merciful. God's made provision. God loves humanity. And we can receive from him by faith or through the manifestation of the Spirit. Amen. And there are times he will just do stuff, like we said, to show out. Not so he can just go around saying, hey, 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 I'm God. No. He wants to woo people to him. Okay? He wants people to see his heart towards humanity and draw them to himself. Hallelujah. So they can be reinstated into their supernatural divine destiny that he had for them for since the beginning of time. Amen. Amen. And so as we took it, take an overview of this and we say, okay, so 12 of the 19 were re received by their faith. Seven, there was nothing said. So it was, it was a manifestation of the gifts of the spirit or working of miracles or a combination. Amen. Um, the, Faith of men and women is strong enough to receive from God complete restoration. Amen. Now, a lot of times, you know, uh, I think we settle, and I know we all can, all can be guilty of this, settle for maybe just getting rid of the pain but not getting restored. Remember he said, I'm El Shaddai, the God that's more than enough? He is not El Chifo, the God who's half enough. Okay, I was from to a guy I preached for time. He said he said his name was El Shaddai, not El Chipo. Amen. You know he is the God who's more than enough to supply everything you have need of. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. All right. So we're going. We're, we've wrapped. You're watching tonight, and we just bless you in Jesus' name. And you know I, I had to finish it up. So thank you for joining us for this short this short period of time tonight. And uh, we just want to bless you in Jesus' name. If you're giving tonight, you can go ahead and send your electronic gift um, to Expedition Church of the Tri or It's actually done in the Faith and Victory Church. Um, you know, the uh, Faith Victory Church, dollar sign Faith Victory Church for um, Cash App. Uh, donations at FBC.org for PayPal. Again, we're still waiting for the IRS to clear the final end of the paperwork to deal with that stuff. So that we don't start getting letters saying you didn't pay taxes. Well, we don't pay taxes. Well, 501c3, you know, and um, your account had money go into it. Okay. Um, I don't want to deal with them. I did a few years ago. They um, didn't get something done right at, pay, at cash app. And we got a tax bill for 12 grand personally. Because all that money that had gone through Cash App to the church, they counted as personal income to me. So we had to go back and get all the records and show that it was deposited into a bank account of a 501c3 and not to me personally. And then the guy went to the arbitrator and they said, oh, okay, yeah, you've got enough evidence here. But now they got it fixed. That little whatever they needed to fix is fixed, and so we, we don't get that anymore. But we got a tax bill. Um, a personal tax bill of $12,000 of back taxes. Yeah. I went, and it took us months because Cash App wouldn't call us back so we could get the thing straight. We called and called and called and called and called and called. They didn't have a mailing address. They don't give you a mailing address. And we finally got one person <clears throat> who was sick to a bulldog and took care of it and got us into contact with the right people after months. Then once we got that, then we were able to go to the, uh, I, the uh, IRS arbitrator 
And he, was, he said, oh, yeah, 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 you guys are, you'll be okay. I'll get this taken care of. And, uh, but <clears throat> so we don't want any more paperwork problems with the IRS. Okay? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't like that kind of stuff. You know. Anyway, all right. So go ahead and send your offerings in Jesus' name. We bless you, and we trust you have a wonderful night. Remember these words of 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, that whatsoever born of God overcometh the world, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Love you. God bless you. See you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Good night.